Thomas the Tank Engine is a British anthropomorphized fictional steam locomotive. That from Wikipedia. Apparently Thomas the Tank Engine first appeared in 1945, but became a TV show that garnered a tremendous amount of interest. This says this was as early as 1979. I don't necessarily believe that it was that early. I guess 1984 perhaps is when it first became a TV thing with Ringo Starr as its storyteller, the former Beatles drummer. And then from 1991-1993, George Carlin, the famous comedian, came and replaced Ringo Starr as the storytelling and as the conductor for Thomas the Tank Engine. At any rate, it's one of the great TV series of all time. Uh, has delighted children and adults all over the world. And, man, I can watch it for hours. So I thought I would spend a few minutes here doing a bracket of all of the Thomas the Tank Engine characters. And we'll try to figure out which ones are our favorites. So, Thomas the Tank Engine Bracketology. Let's go. So, the very first matchup here in Thomas the Tank Engine, and I guess we'll try to learn some things here about Thomas along the way, uh, both the series and the engine. And it is no surprise here that in our bracket, Thomas the Tank Engine, uh, who is the number one train and the namesake of the series, is our top overall seed in the bracket. Thomas apparently is a blue tank engine who works on the Northwestern Railway. Uh, I guess he initially had worked as the station pilot train, and then after helping to rescue one of the other trains from an accident, was rewarded with two faithful coaches, who we'll uh, run into a little bit later here. He, he was assigned to the Farquhar Branch Line, so he carries, I guess he pulls along passenger cars, and is he's the main character. He's not the, he's one of the, I guess, younger trains, it seems like. He's not one of the biggest trains. He's just the train that is the namesake of the show, and I guess is the main character, although the episodes tend to deal with different of the characters at different times. They're pretty short shorts, at least the old ones are. These ones from the 80s and the early 90s, the Ringo Starr and George Carlin ones. And by the way, we're not going to include a lot of the new trains in this bracket. Thomas the Tank Engine as a series has invented lots of new kinds of trains over the years, and now their list of trains is extensively long, and I can't keep them all straight. So we're going to go with the original train set from Thomas the Tank Engine here as we work our way through this bracket. So this first matchup features Thomas the Tank Engine, the one train, and the namesake of the show, this blue steam engine up against the passengers and you can probably tell that as we got to the bottom of the barrel on this bracket we were trying to fill in some pieces here and had to resort to a few things so the passengers i don't know we don't really ever learn a whole lot about the passengers in fact this entire show happens on this mythical island of sodor we never really learn a whole lot about the island of sodor as far as i'm aware um, the island of Sodor has apparently, despite being a small island, an enormous amount of passenger train traffic as well as an enormous amount of freight traffic happening on the island. We don't really ever learn about where these passengers are going or why there are so many of them every day or why they're taking Thomas's trains or some of the other trains and where they're going, for what purposes, I guess maybe for sightseeing. Um, it's, it's never really, as far as I'm aware totally elaborated on. But this first matchup here between Thomas and the passengers pits us in a fundamental matchup between the trains against the people. And the reality is this is a show about the trains and not about the people. Um, we don't really know enough about the passengers to really render too much of a judgment on them. So I'm going to pick Thomas here to win the first matchup. He's the namesake of the show. 
He is the signature anthropomorphized toy train. Thomas the Tank Engine advances here to the second round. Which brings us to our second matchup, which is a matchup between um, a couple of relatively minor characters in the show here, but that's the way the seating plays out. So one of the characters here is the Troublesome Trucks, and we talked about the extent of freight traffic that apparently happens here on the island of Sodor. Some of the trains are responsible for carrying and moving around these freight cars, many of which are full of coal and other kinds of freight. And for some reason, they have anthropomorphized the freight cars in addition to the train engines, and the freight cars are not usually very well behaved. They are difficult, they move themselves around sometimes, they play tricks on the engines, they're not very nice. They're... I don't know, they conspire together. They're just not great. Versus Harold the Helicopter, who is not a major character. In fact, I can't really off the top of my head think of an episode that gets deep into the stories of Harold the Helicopter. I'm sure there are a couple episodes that address Harold. But Harold is a kind of fun character because he's one of the only non-train characters. And he seems like a friendly guy. He's always in the opening credits. And I guess he has a role here somewhere on the island. And I would say between these two, the Troublesome Trucks, not usually super pleasant. So I'm going to go ahead and pick Harold here to advance into the second round. Which brings us to a matchup between Diesel, who, as you can tell, is a diesel engine. And as you can tell by Diesel's facial expression, is not a particularly friendly engine, as best I can recall. Uh, diesel is a bit of a curmudgeon-y grump, to say the very least. And as, as best I can recall, was sort of malicious, too. And Diesel is up here against Annie and Clarabelle, who are the two passenger car coaches that Thomas the Tank Engine is supposed to carry around. Annie and Clarabelle uh, are apparently very beloved by Thomas. I don't know a whole lot about them other than that. But certainly as compared to Diesel, who, like I said, is sort of a malicious character. He's sort of a... Um, an antagonist character in the show. Um, Annie and Clarabelle are generally regarded as positive characters. They've always got, they usually have smiles on their faces. Thomas drives them around. They seem pretty easy to drive around, and I think they're generally full of passengers that are just going on sightseeing ex ex expeditions as opposed to anything, you know, more businessy or serious. So I guess between the two of these, I'm going to go ahead and pick Annie and Clarabelle here to advance to the second round. So, this brings us to a matchup between Donald and Douglas, who are interesting because they are twins. They are twin trains, and in the numbered lineup of the trains, they occupy numbers 9 and 10. And as you can see, they're fairly uh, cheery fellows. They are, looks like they're black trains. They've got a little bit of uh, white and red trim. They're kind of sharp looking. They're not major characters in the show, but they are regular characters from time to time. Do we have anything here on, let's see, Donald and Douglas? Okay, I'm not pulling up anything obvious here on Donald and Douglas. But, oh, Donald and Douglas are twin black mixed traffic Scottish tender engines. They tend to work together on the railway, although they can be argumentative. Donald is number 9, Douglas is number 10. Yeah, I do think they play tricks on each other from time to time. And they are up here against this train that I think is best known as the Famous Visitor. And what's unique about this train, known as the Famous Visitor, is it is one of the only trains that ever comes on the show that doesn't have a face. So this train is actually not anthropomorphized. And as, I, as best I recall, when this non-anthropomorphized train shows up, it's very fancy, and I believe some of the other engines get fairly jealous of all the attention the famous visitor gets. And I don't recall how that all resolves itself. I imagine there's some lesson learned about not being jealous along the way. But the visitor isn't anthropomorphized, so I'm not sure how it actually interacts with the other trains. It's a fairly minor character that only shows up in, I don't know, can't be more than an episode or two. So 
I think we'll go ahead and pick Donald and Douglas here and advance them to the second round. And that brings us here to a matchup between Henry, who is one of the larger engines, a green engine. Um, and where's number three, number three train Henry. Henry is a green mixed traffic tender engine that works on the main line. It was originally a prototype engine that needed special Welsh coal to operate properly. Following an accident when pulling the flying kipper, Henry was rebuilt, giving him a new shape and better performance, and eliminating the need for expensive special coal. I don't know how they know all this. Somehow that must all get explained in the show. Um, I didn't know any of that backstory on Henry. Henry is, as best we can tell, the second biggest and most powerful engine on the show. And we'll get to the, the biggest and most powerful engine here in a little bit. Henry always seemed fairly nice. Henry and uh, this other big engine seemed to be friends, but Henry just seemed a little friendlier. Henry obviously is green. Henry, I think, on some days pulls the express trains. Henry is up against a character here called Toad. And I would say of all the characters we did put into this bracket, uh, Toad is not one I remember a whole lot about. I'm trying to find some contents here on Toad. Uh, Toad is a brake van, apparently, that works with one of the other trains named Oliver. Um, and I guess is the subject of a few episodes. He's certainly not a major character, though. And Henry certainly is. Henry seems friendly enough. I, I'm not sure totally what to think about Henry. I, when, I, when I was growing up, I thought Henry was a girl. Um, I'm not sure why. Green girl? I don't know. But uh, certainly Henry is a more major character here. So we're going to advance Henry over Toad. Which brings us to a matchup between Duncan versus Birdie the Bus. So Duncan is not a particularly major character, as best I can recall, either. Dun Duncan apparently is a grumpy yellow Scottish tank engine um, who came as a spare engine after an accident. So I think Duncan was a little bit later addition to the show. As you can see, he's sort of yellow-orange. Um, looks like a reasonably friendly face. Kind of a thinner engine than some of the other trains. Um, clearly not like in the Cool Kids Club, though, in terms of the main engines. And Duncan is here up against Birdie the Bus. Birdie the Bus is always a fun character. Birdie the Bus is a single-decker bus. There is another bus that's a double-decker bus that we'll get to. Birdie's a very friendly character. Uh, in fact, Birdie is often very helpful when passengers are running late or there's some incident. Birdie often ferries the passengers around the island and helps them catch up to the trains. I don't know why the passengers don't just take the bus in the first place. But Birdie seems like a good character. Um, that is, again, one of the few anthropomorphized characters who isn't a train. Duncan is such a minor character, I can't really in good faith pick Duncan, and Birdie's a pretty good guy. So I'm going to go ahead and pick Birdie here. And this brings us to a matchup here between Terrence the Tractor versus Mavis. So Terrence the Tractor is often featured in the opening credits. I can't really recall many episodes that had Terrence the Tractor in them. But he seems like an interesting thing. I always liked tractors. And I'm sure there are some episodes where he has a role because there are often situations where the trains get themselves into trouble and they need land-faring uh, entities to be a part of the story. So Terrence seems pretty nice. Uh, Mavis, by contrast, is a privately owned quarry diesel engine who works for the Farquhar Quarry Company. It's more of a freight engine. Um, she works at the Sodor Slate Quarry. Like Salty, she's indifferent to the rivalry between the steam engines and diesel engines. So she's one of the few female engines in the show. I don't recall her being particularly friendly, though. It seems like she kind of ignores some of the other trains. I'm not sure if she's generally painted as a protagonist or an antagonist. But I would say, based on just gut feeling alone, I'm going to go ahead and pick Terrence the Tractor here. Which brings us to a matchup between the two-train Edward, who is a fairly major character in the show, um, and the train shed, which I'll get to. So Edward 
is a blue mixed traffic tender engine who runs his own branch line, number two. So he's got his own line. He's one of the oldest engines, engines on Sodor and occasionally made fun of for his age. That's not very nice. Um, apparently Edward had to move sheds, so I don't know where Edward sleeps. And speaking of sleeping, the trains are generally described to be sleeping within the train shed because they're anthropomorphized. I guess they talk about the train shed like it's a house for these trains when they go to sleep at night. They never really spend a lot of time explaining how these trains work. What percentage of them is human and what percentage of them is train? I don't really know how their human organs work. They don't have arms, really, and in place of legs, I guess they just have wheels. I don't know if they eat. Um, I guess they take water. I, I just don't know what human organs they may have. Like, I don't know, do these trains have a liver? It just, it's very unclear. But I know they have train parts. I just don't know how the anatomy of these things works, and I wish they had an episode that talked about that. The train shed is always interesting as these trains, you know, go in and out. We'll get to the turntable here in a little bit that uh, ferries them into their correct placement in the shed. But Edward's a major character. Edward's a very friendly character. I like Edward a lot. Edward always seemed a little bit of an underdog on the show and just seemed like a good guy. Hardworking, been around a while, does his job, has cultivated a unique niche for himself. Just seems like a good train. So let's send Edward along to the next round. All right, so this brings us to a matchup here between Thomas, the namesake of the show. We're in the second round now. Uh, we've got a whole second side of the bracket to get to, but Thomas here is advancing to the second round as the namesake of the show versus Harold the Helicopter, who I said is a pretty interesting character. Certainly figurines of the helicopter are kind of fun. I don't know that I can in good faith really advance Harold at this point, though, because he's such a minor character, and Thomas is a good guy. Thomas, he occasionally has some faults of his own, but, you know, generally seems fairly well-intentioned. He's a good train and learns his lesson many times and is obviously the subject of a great many number of episodes. So I guess we're going to advance Thomas. Without him, there might not be a show. All right, now Thomas's coaches, Annie and Clarabelle, the smiling coach cars that carry passengers around the island are up against the twin engines of Donald and Douglas. So we talked about, I guess, both here in the first round. It's an interesting matchup here because we have two female twins here on the left, Annie and Clarabelle, who Thomas adores, and then two male twins here on the right, Donald and Douglas. Now I will say, there aren't many episodes about Annie and Clarabelle. They're not major characters. They're accessories to Thomas, and they carry on the passengers, and I guess make the passengers happy. Um, I don't know how great it is having to have your face like right up in Thomas's butt all the time there for Annie, but uh, it doesn't seem like a great life. Donald and Douglas, I don't think they have the perfect personalities. I think they fight a lot. Um, but they fight a lot in some interesting ways. They definitely try to confuse people. They're kind of fun in that way. There's some interesting episodes made about them. They certainly learn their lesson. Um, I had a couple of twin friends when I was a kid, and Donald and Douglas, I guess, always kind of reminded me of them. So, I don't, I don't dislike Annie and Clarabelle by any stretch, but I just think Donald and Douglas are a little bit more major characters here. So we're going to advance Donald and Douglas. Which brings us to a second round matchup here between Henry, the large engine, versus Birdie the Bus, and this is a really tough matchup, I think. These two, they're, they're both good characters, and that's kind of what makes this challenging. They're also both fairly major characters. They both show up in a fair, fairly large number of episodes. I think they both have a prominent role to play within the show. And... Yeah, I mean, they, I don't think either one of them really deserves to get knocked out at this point. Henry, I don't know, how do I describe Henry's personality here? I don't really describe it in the text that I'm reading, but Henry seems to have a bit of a mixed personality. And if you don't 
like Henry's counterpart, the other big engine, because he's cross, Henry's a little bit of a kind of nice guy counterpart to that. On the other hand, Bertie the Bus is a really, really positive character. Let me see if I have a... I don't... Okay, Bertie is a red bus. By the way, I spelled Bertie's name wrong here. It's B-E-R-T-I-E. -E. Uh, red bus who works alongside Thomas's branch line is owned by Sodor Railways. Well, Bertie's an indispensable part of the show because if the if the trains break down, you need Bertie. And apparently, there's a road that runs alongside the train tracks. I suppose there could come a day where Bertie may outlast the trains and be a very important resource to passengers on this island. Bertie's a very small bus, though, and I never understood how they fit so many passengers inside of Bertie. At any rate, though, I think Bertie. My, my gut here tells me Bertie. I think Henry's a good character, but I'm going to go Bertie here just because the bus is a, a positive asset to the show. And this brings us to our next second round matchup here between Terrence the Tractor, who we talked about in the first round. Not a major character, um, but he's orange, and that's kind of fun. Edward, hardworking, really diligent, good engine. It's hard to pick against Edward here, so we're going to go ahead and advance Edward here to the third round. So in the third round on this side of the bracket here between Thomas, the namesake of the show, and the twins, Donald and Douglas, interesting matchup. Thomas obviously is only one train. Donald and Douglas are two trains. Thomas has a little bit more of a pure and innocent personality than Donald and Douglas, who are, are a bit more mixed. They're neither necessarily protagonists or antagonists. Thomas is exclusively a protagonist within the show. So I think I'm going to advance Thomas here. I just I, I, I haven't seen anything out of Donald and Douglas that would make me think they have the ability to unseat the show's signature character. All right, we gave a lot of love to Birdie the Bus in the last round. And that was, I think, merited. Birdie the Bus is a is a good character. I think um, you know Birdie. Birdie seems like a positive asset to the show. Um, on the other hand, Birdie's not a particularly remarkable character within the show, and I think there's there are some lessons I suppose to be learned from Birdie about um, doing your job and supporting what needs to be done. Edward is a much more seminal and major and important character. And I think what Edward represents is a level of humble goodness that is really core to the show's message to kids. One of the great things about Thomas the Show in general is that it sends a really good message to kids. Every show teaches a lesson usually about hubris, about um, generally doing your work well, being useful is a term they talk a lot about that I'm sure wouldn't be on on a show like that made today. Um, it just teaches you how to be a really good, diligent, hardworking person that is nice to your peers and all those things that make you successful in society. So I'm going to pick Edward here. I think Edward's a really um, kind of understated, positive character. Unfortunately, that creates a really challenging matchup here between two blue cha trains. In fact, they're the number one and two trains on the show. And this is for a trip to the finals between Thomas, the namesake of the show, Thomas the Tank Engine, versus Edward. Thomas is a little different than Edward. Edward has his coal car as kind of a separate part of his train as opposed to Thomas, who just has a little coal compartment in the back. Thomas is pretty short and squat. I think just as far as like general aesthetics are concerned, Edward's probably a better looking train. Thomas is a nice character. He seems relatable, I think, especially to kids. He's kind of an ordinary train. Edward, I think, is a more of a role model train, and Edward, I think, teaches you things. Edward teaches you, again, how to be hardworking and how to be a good person. I think Edward teaches you that uh, there is merit in uh, not necessarily being the star, but in being a tremendously impactful role player. Um, and Quite frankly, I, I don't know that the show, I don't know that, that the island of Sodor could function 
without Edward. I, I think actually it could get by without Thomas. You might have to change the show's name. It might be Edward and Friends. But I'm going to go ahead and pick an upset here and pick Edward to advance to the finals. I really like Edward. It's one of my favorite trains growing up. And Edward gets a shot to face the winner of the right side of the bracket here that we'll dig into right now. On the right side of the bracket, we have our first first round matchup here between the five train bright red James. Let's see what we know about James. James is a red mixed traffic tender engine who works on the Northwestern Railway, usually on the main line, numbered five. He is proud of his splendid red paintwork and does not like getting dirty. Despite being a mixed traffic engine, he does not like pulling trucks and thinks of himself on a high level if not superior to the others and can be vain, boastful, and overconfident, but he always gets his comeuppance. And I think at the end of the day, James is a, he's a good character, but um, he is a little bit, a little bit vain. And he is pretty. He's, got a, he's a very good-looking train. He's not the biggest, he's not the smallest, he's just a good-looking train. Um, and I don't blame him for not wanting to get dirty, because you can see that picture there on the right. It involves coal. In fact, that's a picture from when Thomas got buried in coal in one of the episodes. For some reason, the island of Sodor apparently produces an enormous amount of coal. Um, I presume if this show were being made today with the environmental consciousness that dominates our culture now, they would not glorify coal in the way that this show glorified coal back in the 80s and 90s. But there is a huge amount of coal. A lot of the trains have to carry coal cars. And coal is a central element within the show often the subject of little incidents the trains get into that often end up in them getting very dirty. It's kind of weird the island's full, so full of coal. I still don't really know the full story of the island, but as you can tell, adding coal here was a pretty uh, desperation mood and, uh, move in making the bracket, so we're going to go ahead and pick James here uh, to advance to the second round. All right, Trevor the Traction Engine. Let's see if I have a write-up on Trevor. I'm not sure I do. Oh, Trevor's a traction engine that was due to be broken up before he was saved by the Vicar of Wellsworth. So the difference between Trevor and everyone else is that Trevor doesn't run on rails. And he's quite a humble engine, but he ends up being very useful. He All he ever wants to be is useful. And there are a few episodes where he is very useful in support of moving things around off of the tracks. It kind of makes you wonder why the other trains even need tracks. All right, Trevor is up against a character named Duck. Duck is not a major character, but is a regular character, a great Western tank engine who runs his own branch line with Oliver. He thinks there are two ways of doing things, the great Western way and the wrong way. I don't like that kind of hubris. Duck's real name is Montague, but he is nicknamed Duck because he waddles. He's kind of got a wide frame, not a very stable train. And you can see his look there. There's like quite a bit of hubris going on there with the Duck. And, well, it pains me because Duck is a... I, I like Ducks. I like Ducks a lot. But I think in terms of the show, Trevor is a, is a better character. So I'm going to go ahead here and advance Trevor the Traction Engine to the second round. All right, that brings us to a matchup here featuring, first, Henrietta. Not a major character. Henrietta's a coach that travels with Toby. Um, I'm not sure who the passengers are that ride along in Henrietta, but apparently Henrietta's just a, a one-car coach that kind of rides along by herself. I like the facial placement there on Henrietta, as opposed to Annie and Clarabelle, which have their faces right on the front of the train that hooks up to the back of the engine. Henrietta's got a little more room to breathe there. She's kind of got like a football face mask or something going on uh, there in front of her face, which kind of is nice and airy. That means Henrietta doesn't carry a lot of passengers, it doesn't look like, but I guess if you're just a sightseeing passenger, it could be fairly pleasant to ride along. And Henrietta is up against Sir Topham Hatt who, in the early episodes, is known as the Fat Controller. He's the controller of the Northwestern Railway. He first appeared in the Railway series. He's one of the most iconic characters in the Thomas franchise, along with other characters such as Thomas and the Steam, train, Steam Team. He is also a figure in the Model series and animated following the 12th series. Well, 
my recollections of Sir Topham Hatt were, of course, that he's a fairly major person to show. Um, he's always angry, or at least he seems like he only shows up when there's a need to be angry. And that kind of scared me when I was a kid. But the reality about Sir Topham Hatt is all he's really trying to do is keep the trains running on time. He's an important character. And when he's getting mad, it's because he's trying to whip people into shape and get them to do their jobs and make the damn trains run on time. And anybody who's ever ridden a train and knows how late they can be should really appreciate that. So I know a lot of kids don't like Sir Topham Hatt. Or at the very least, they don't necessarily appreciate his, his importance. But he's the one who's got to run the show here, and for that reason, I'm going to advance him. All right, that brings us to a matchup here between Bill and Ben and Bulgy. So Bill and Ben are yellow tank engine twins owned by the, by the Sodor China Clay Company. They're mischievous and love to play pranks on each other's engines. They both work at the docks at the company's clay pits. They mine a lot of stuff here at this island. There's, there's coal, there's slate, and there's clay. And clay is what Bill and Ben work on. I don't know what it is about the twins on this show. The tw there, there seem to be a lot of twins, and they all seem to play a lot of pranks. As opposed to Donald and Douglas, Bill and Ben are pretty stubby. They're little orange-yellow twins. They're small little engines. And I don't have as fond memories of them as I do Donald and Douglas. But they are up against Bulgy. And... Bulgy is a bit of a problematic character, as I recall. Um, Bulgy's a double-decker bus. Keep in mind, the show's British, so Bulgy is a double-decker railway bus. A bad-tempered double-decker bus with an ideological opposition to railways. His favorite phrase is, free the roads. So Bulgy's in the wrong profession here as a railway bus. Uh, seems to be bad-tempered, competes with the trains a lot. And maybe he's got a point. You know, trains are kind of outdated. If you got roads, why do you need trains? Uh, it carries a lot of passengers, but I can't really respect the bad attitude. You know, you're part of an operation, you're getting paid by the company, you should do what the company wants, for the most part. And I'm not appreciative of Bully's bad attitude. So, although they aren't perfect characters, we're going to go ahead and advance Bill and Ben. So, this brings us to one of the major trains in the show, Gordon. Let's see what we can find out about Gordon. Gordon is a big blue tender engine that works on the main line numbered four. He's also one of the fastest and strongest engines on Sodor. And his main task is to pull the railway's express train. At times, this leads him to feel superior. He's mainly used for passenger duties, but has occasionally pulled goods trains much to his dislike, as he believes that these are below him. So here's a guy with some serious hubris. But in Gordon's case, it's largely deserved, because he is a big, powerful, strong engine. He's the fastest engine on the island. He likes to bully some of the other trains sometimes, but usually only when they cross him. He is definitely an adult train. He does not like being played around with. He doesn't like pranks. He likes to do his job, which I can respect, as he pulls this large passenger express train. And interestingly, in this matchup, he's up against his express train. The express train is, I believe it's three cars long. They're pretty big cars. It looks like they carry a lot of passengers. Clearly, they are going places fast, as opposed to Annie and Clarabelle, which are sightseeing trains. The express is clearly more for business passengers. Um, and Gordon pulls them. Sometimes Henrietta pulls them. I don't really know why there are so many business people traveling by train on the island of Sodor. I don't really understand this island at all. And the inexplicability of those express cars, I guess, is what leads me to want to pick Gordon the engine here. He's just doing his job. So I think I'm going to go ahead and advance him. In the matchup here between Boko and Toby, um, let's see what we can learn about Boko. It's a green mixed traffic diesel engine that works at the goods station on Edward's branch line. He, along with Edward, is a mentor to Bill and Ben. I didn't realize that. So Boko seems like a good guy. Um, kind of an interesting looking train there. Different than a lot of the other trains. Um, I don't remember a lot about Boko in the episodes, though. Kind of a peripheral character. 
is up against Toby, who is a brown tram engine that used to work on his own railway near Thomas's branch line. Toby is number seven. After it closed, he was bought by the fat con controller, Sir Topham Hatt, and now works on both Thomas's branch line with his coach, Henrietta. So Toby and Henrietta go together. They're kind of silly looking. Like, that is not how you would design a streamlined train if you were designing a streamlined train. But I guess Toby works, apparently. I doubt Toby moves very fast. But Toby's generally good-natured and is more of, a more of a main character than Boko. So I'm going to go ahead and advance Toby here. Let's see, Oliver is a Great Western tank engine who works with Duck on his branch line, numbered 11. He and his brake van, Toad, made a daring escape to Sodor uh, from being scrapped and were almost caught at the last moment, but they were saved by Douglas. He is not to be confused with Oliver the Excavator. Um, Oliver seems like an authentically good character, I think, for the most part. Um, I think he was brought in at a later date than a lot of the other characters, and, you know, he's kind of a peripheral character, but seems like a good guy. Kind of nice, aesthetically pleasing engine. And he's up against the Conductor, um, I guess most prominently played by George Carlin. There are multiple Conductors, and these trains, although they are anthropomorphized, do get driven by Conductors. The Conductors are pretty clearly figurines. They have these kind of weirdly jointed arms and legs that kind of move in one fell swoop. They do change expressions from time to time, and they bend their legs sometimes, and they crawl in and out of the trains. Um, the conductors are important characters. I mean, they got to resolve problems all the time. They're, they're pretty prominent in the show. So I appreciate Oliver and his role. Uh, I just think the conductors have more of a role to play, and who can pick against George Carlin here in the first round? All right, the final first round matchup here is between Percy and the turntable. So Percy is a small green saddle tank engine that was brought to Sodor to help run the railway during Henry Gordon and James's strike. Percy's name is number six. He's Thomas's best friend and one of the youngest engines on the Northwestern Railway. He often gets into trouble with his attempts to play tricks on the other engines. His favorite job is to deliver the mail, and he works on Thomas's branch line as a goods engine. As you can see, Percy looks very young. I always thought of Percy kind of like a three-year-old. Like, Percy's pretty immature. Um, and I think Percy pulls Thomas down. I think Thomas wants to grow up a little bit. Percy pulls him down. Percy, to me, is kind of an annoyance, actually. I know a lot of people like Percy. I'm not a huge fan of Percy. A little green engine. Percy's up against the turntables. I think anybody who has watched Thomas the Tank Engine becomes fascinated with these turntables. They spin the trains around and I guess orient them down to the right tracks. Every once in a while they'll mess up and the train will go down the wrong track and that becomes the subject of an episode. The turntables are fascinating. I remember as a kid being fascinated by the turntables. Percy probably should win this matchup. Percy's much more of a main character. But I don't like Percy, and I feel like one of these auxiliary characters should advance. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the turntable here to advance to the second round. Second round matchup here between James, who we talked about in the first round. Gaudy, red, kind of fun engine, subject of a lot of episodes. Trevor the Traction Engine's a good guy, pretty auxiliary character. Doesn't star in many episodes, usually sits off to the side, a little bit quiet. Kind of a scratchy voice. James is far from a perfect character. James has a lot of hubris, and he has to learn a lot of lessons along the way. But James is growing up, and I think James deserves to advance here into the third round. All right, Bill and Ben, we talked about them in the first round. I said I wasn't a huge fan of them. I'm still not. Um, I don't know. They got, that, they got that same thing that Percy's going with, the chubby cheeks. I'm just not a big fan. They're, 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 they're pranksters. They're, they're not on that much. They just don't seem super reliable. And I'm somebody that likes reliability. And if you need reliability, Sir Topham Hatt is the person who ensures reliability. So the most important human character, I'm going to advance Sir Topham Hatt. Gordon, the big engine. We advanced Gordon over his express trains in the first round. Gordon is a 
pretty important character to the island of Sodor. Like Gordon is, Gordon's a big engine, prominent, important. He does his job, a little grumpy. He himself learns some lessons along the way, and I think it's good to see somebody with that much ego learn some lessons from time to time. Toby, much nicer character. Toby's a very nice character. Not a major character, but a nice character. The problem with Toby is, if you had to pick a train to actually get a job done here, you would never pick Toby. Toby just looks kind of silly. It's like a, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why they built a train that looks like that. It's just a box. Maybe someone that knows more about trains can comment on Toby, but quite frankly, if I'm going to pick a, an engine to really be successful here, I'm going to pick Gordon. Gordon gets the job done. All right, we advanced the turntables in round one. That may have been a mistake, but here they are, and they're up against the conductors. Turntables are very interesting. I don't know why they're so fascinating, but the conductors are really who have to drive these trains and have to resolve issues and deal with the passengers. They don't really differentiate between the person driving the train and those that are, I guess, just dealing with the passengers. I guess these conductors are presumed to do all of it. Um, they also have the difficult job of climbing into these trains that don't ever seem to have doors. And I guess they have to shovel the coal into the engine. That's difficult. It seems like that's a lot of work. So conductor is doing a lot here for the island of Sodor. We're going to advance the conductor and George Carlin. All right, James is up against Sir Topham Hatt here. This is a really tough matchup because Sir Topham Hatt is a super critical character to the effective functioning of the island. On the other hand, this is a show about trains, and James is one of the most prominent train characters on the show. Uh, people seem to really like James. James is a flawed character, but James is definitely a favorite, I think, because he's pretty. He seems very relatable. He has a lot of human faults that I think a lot of us can relate to. Um, I do really appreciate the work of Sir Topham Hatt, but I think I'm going to have to go and advance James here to the next round. This brings us, we're closing in here, guys. Uh, Gordon, the big engine, Gordon, against the conductors. It's a tough matchup, one I hadn't really considered ahead of time. Uh, the conductors, I guess, are doing their job. You know, we keep saying George Carlin, but he's an important, I mean, he does all the voices, though. I don't know why, why he's called out for the conductors, but I guess maybe he sees himself in the conductors. Humans that make the railway go round. We didn't advance Sir Topham Hatt at this at this level. I can't really imagine that we would advance the conductors and not Sir Topham Hatt. So I think at this point, you know, Gordon is Gordon's an important train here. Um, I feel like we got it. We got to go Gordon here. We got to send Gordon along. Gordon's going to make the final four. It looks like. Which brings us to a final matchup on this side of the bracket. These are two trains with a lot of attitude. In James's case, it's just kind of childish hubris. Uh, in Gordon's case, it's much more of a sort of adult ego. James is a bigger train. If you needed him to carry a lot of passengers' cars, you'd probably pick him. James often tries to go too fast. James, like I said, has a lot of relatable human faults. James is probably prettier. His bright red paint is very striking. Gordon's grumpier. James is, albeit an egoist, a little bit friendly. I think there's more room to grow in James, too. Gordon is what he is. He's probably not going to change. He's like your grandfather. But James is still growing and improving and learning from his mistakes, and it's kind of fun to ride along with his mistakes. So James is my pick to advance to the finals, which brings us to a finals matchup between the two-train Edward and the five-train James. Interestingly, these are two sort of medium-sized engines. They're larger than Thomas and Percy, but they're smaller than Gordon and Henry. We've got the blue train Edward and the red train James. James has more faults here between the two of them. James has more of an ego. Edward really doesn't have an ego. Edward is hardworking. He is experienced. He puts his head down. He does his job. Very friendly, nice character. James is maybe a little more interesting as a character. James is uh, very engaging. I think there are more episodes about James as a more definable personality. It's a really, really tough pick here. I think either of these trains would be well-deserved to win the show. 
Um, my pick here, though, is going to be Edward. And the reason I'm going to pick Edward here to be our champion is that I think if one character is going to embody the spirit of what you're supposed to learn from Thomas the Tank Engine uh, about not showcasing hubris, about doing your job, being useful, about being a good guy, about being friendly, not, not playing pranks. Um, Edward just seems like kind of, he's lurking in the background, but he's, he's the model engine. He's the engine that all the other engines are learning lessons on the way to being. And if all the trains could be like Edward, you'd have a perfectly functional railway. Now, personality is very important, and James has a lot of that. And James should be commended for a second place finish here. He's a wonderful train. And um, I'm sure his ego will be hurt a little bit by being told he's second best. But I think Edward has sat through a lot of episodes, not getting to be the main character. He's done his job at every step of the way, and I think he deserves a reward for that. So Edward it is. Edward is our champion. Congratulations, Edward. These brackets always end with kind of a, an unsatisfactory closing page here. But nevertheless, Edward is our champion. I think we have stumbled on a reality here about what the show is trying to achieve. Really, Thomas is going to grow up someday, and he's going to be like Edward, and everybody's going to love him. So, Edward, the champion of Thomas the Tank Engine.